Let's take a look at a natural, free-flowing river, its tributaries, and its floodplain. When heavy rains fall or snow melts in a river basin such as this, the river first rises to the top of its banks. The water then flows into the lowest-lying areas of the floodplain, into wetlands, side channels, and marshes. If the water continues to rise, so too does the water within the river's floodplain. During the largest floods, floodwaters rise until they reach the outer extent of the floodplain. It is the cyclical flow of water into floodplains that make these areas among the most beneficial and valuable places on Earth for people and nature. Floodplains serve as natural filters that clean our water by removing nutrients and sediments. Floodplains can support highly productive farms because centuries of floods have left behind nutrient-rich soil. Floodplains also recharge underground aquifers used for drinking water and irrigation. And these areas are among the richest places for wildlife like fish and waterfowl that support important economic activities. But what happens when a river and its floodplain are altered? Dams are often constructed to help by holding back floodwaters and releasing them later. Levees, which are common fixtures along most large rivers, are also built to control floodwaters by keeping water in the river channel. With these structures in place, floodplains can be farmed with a reduced risk of flooding. With a sense of security created by dams and levees, communities often grow within floodplains too. Over time, some towns within floodplains grow into cities. Now let's take a look at what happens when rivers changed by dams and levees flood. As is true with the natural system, the river will first flow into the lowest lying areas of the floodplain. Here though, few such areas remain. As designed, the reservoir behind the dam stores floodwaters. But if the flooding continues, the reservoir may reach its capacity, sending even more floodwaters downstream and further stressing the levees. During the worst floods, levees can fail or be overtopped. And when levees designed to protect cities fail, the result is often millions of dollars in damages, or worse, the loss of people's livelihoods or even lives. Sadly, history has proven over and over again that in many cases, dams and levees alone are insufficient in protecting communities from floods. So what can be done to manage rivers and floodplains to reduce the risk of flooding? In short, rivers need more room. Levees that line a river's edge can be set back into the floodplain farther away from the river, allowing some of the floodplain to become inundated during floods, providing additional room for floodwaters. These areas not only provide room for flooding, but also help to filter and clean water. They serve as nurseries for fish, birds, and other species, so the rivers have more wildlife. Wildlife that is often an important source of food and recreation for local communities. In some cases, farmers may continue to grow crops on the land, particularly those crops that are more flood tolerant. But in other cases, they may choose to restore the floodplain to its natural state. Flexibility is also key to good flood risk management. For instance, Floodgates can be installed along some levees, so that in the most dire of emergencies, some farm fields can be flooded to avoid catastrophic damages nearby. In preparation for the most severe of floods, floodways that are designed to move floodwaters away from or around communities and cities can be built. Designating such floodways requires working with local communities and landowners and can be costly, but such designs can help avoid the high costs of large-scale disasters. Now let's see what happens when flooding strikes in this scenario, where the river has more room. Again, floodwaters first spill into the lowest lying areas of the floodplain. Here we see there are more places for the water to flow. Even in this scenario, levees will be stressed as the reservoir reaches its capacity and floodwaters continue to rise. During such cases, floodgates installed along the levees could be opened to help alleviate pressure from flooding. If severe flooding persists and the structures that protect the communities are at risk of failure, the floodway could be activated as a last resort measure of flood protection.
This very approach, one that uses dams and levees in conjunction with setback levees, reconnected floodplains, and established floodways has many benefits. It reduces flood damages, improves water quality, and sustains healthy fish and wildlife. This integrated approach was the reason we avoided catastrophic flooding at large communities and cities along the Mississippi River during the floods of 2011. Flooding that broke records at six of the 15 flood gauges on the lower half of the mighty Mississippi. In short, this system, under extreme duress and pressure, performed exactly as it was designed. But there remains room for improvement along the Mississippi, its tributaries, and other rivers in North America and around the globe. <laughs>